yeah, I'm Carmine Gaida. Um, <laughs> I'm in New York City, and I am using coding rooms for teaching a, um, we, we call, you know, it's our, for us, it's CS121, but it's like the, you know, first semester computer science class, you know, where, where you, you learn the program, you know, the, you know, from the very, very beginning. Um, we're using Java for um, this. So the school I'm teaching at is called Pace University. And um, I'm um, an adjunct professor in the computer science department. And yeah, basically, we're, um, I'm using it for the computer science one class, you know, and that's, and we, yeah, I guess that we use Java for that. So, you know, obviously given the current uh, environment and, um, you know, with the pandemic and especially in the States, um, what do you do in your work right now to connect with your students remotely? And, and how are you, you know, teaching coding to computer science mm -hmm. students? And what, what are kind of like, you know, some of the issues you're facing with this remote yeah. learning structure and, and if you can elaborate on that. Sure. So normally, um, when we were in person, we had sort of a lecture portion of the class and the lab portion of the class. And um, for the, you know, lecture portion, you know, I'm like going over slides and, and that kind of stuff. And for the lab portion, basically, they're given, like you know, some tasks to do, you know, write a program that does this, write a program that does that. And usually it's myself and a teacher assistant, and we would go around to everyone's laptops or I sometimes teach in a lab room, um, you know, go around to all the rooms in a lab or, you know, the them students, you know, we'd like be next to them, helping them, you know, and stuff like that, or mark their work, you know, to see if they're done um, before they can leave the lab. You know? um, so that was kind of what we were doing before. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm not even using Zoom. I'm just using coding rooms um, for the class. So what I did is I have an amazing amount of equipment and gear and fancy microphones and lights and cameras and things. And um, I pre-recorded all of my lectures. So all of the me going over slides, um, I didn't feel that needed to be live. So I pre-recorded everything before the semester even started. Um, and that's up and available for the students. They can watch ahead if they want to, you know, they can do whatever. So um, the idea is that they would watch that and then by and on Thursdays morning is when I do live with the uh, with coding rooms um, stuff. So my live class is just in coding rooms. Um, and basically what I'm doing there is um, I start by, you know, doing doing some examples and having them do something like a small, simple thing. Um, like this week, it was um, ask the person for their name. If their name is Carmine, print hello, professor. Otherwise, print hello, whatever name. You know, like, this is like, kind of like that stuff. Um, so um, I'm using basically coding rooms for our Thursday meeting. You know, it's, it's kind of simulating being in a lab. Okay, awesome. So, you know, before using coding rooms, just kind of want to understand how you came across them. How did you find out about it? And also mm -hmm. you mentioned that you implemented for your students, you know, um, for actual classroom use now with this remote learning structure. How long did it take you to kind of uh, implement the software in your cur curriculum? Oh, sure. Um, I think I found, found it on Reddit. Um, I think that's where I saw it, maybe. Um, um, you know, uh, maybe Sasha was planting seeds around Reddit or something. <laughs> um, but I might have, uh, I might have, I might have seen it there. I'm not sure. And then, um, yeah, I think so. And then, um, I just used it instantly. I didn't, I didn't have a huge setup time. Um, you know, I started the semester with it, so it's not like the students were used to something else. And then we switched to coding rooms. It was like these are fresh. You know, these are literally. You know, the, my students were in high school four months ago, five months. You know. So, you know, they knew Zoom. I used Zoom for the first day of class. But after that, I used coding rooms for the rest. Um, so, um, the, the, it was pretty instant. I, um, there, the new classroom feature was added where you can have an actual like class and this, I can give them a link to the class and then I can set up the meetings in, you know, in there. Um, so I just put the link in, in my, you know, my LMS, the, we use Blackboard Learning Management System at the school. So I just put a link to that, you know, to the class and they just clicked on it. And I think the first day, you know, the, the students stumbled for the first 15 minutes 
And then um, I think there was a little confusion about um, how the input works and stuff at first. But after that, we were like ready to go, you know. I didn't like, I didn't do a presentation about it, but I just, you know, just clicked the link and started using it, you know. Okay, awesome so. to hear. So, you know, after using coding rooms, you know, um, get, uh, just want to ask specifically how long have you used it right now? And, and mm -hmm. what is it specifically that you really like about it? Just mm -hmm. um, any particular aspect and how has it sure. helped you as an educator uh, on a day to day basis? Sure. So I have run six class sessions with it. They're each about two hours long. So or you can say six times or <laughs> an hour or two, a couple hours. Um, so I've used it every Thursday for the past six weeks. Um, the, the thing, the feature that most attracted me to it right away was the fact I could see the students typing in real time. And, um, you know, I looked at using um, some of these other systems like um, uh, Replit and, um, you know, even, um, you know, we have an online textbook we use and I was like, oh, can I like, sort of hack this into something, you know. Um, but being able to see the students type in real time is what attracted me to it. And what's great is um, I can, so for instance, like with the, you know, the, so the other day I started class, and I said, you know, after first five, 10 minutes, I'm like, great, okay, everyone write this program. And then I can see them all, you know, typing away, but I can also see if someone is not typing away. You know, and um, you know, I, my, you know, I, I have, uh, you know, I have a student. We all have a student who just like maybe logs in and checks out. You know, they log in, and then they just want to try to catch when you're taking attendance, and then, <laughs> you know, and then they're not. But I can see if someone is not participating, and the whole thing with doing Zoom classes and doing stuff over Zoom and people have their cameras on when they don't. And, you know, I don't, I don't personally insist people put their cameras on and stuff um, or anything um, or their microphones or whatever. For computer science, it's great. Like they're either typing or not typing. If they're not typing, you know, I mean, they could be listening, but you know, if I, you know, I can see if they're active right now. The newer feature you guys added, um, when I can see the time, the time, like someone was active five minutes ago, somebody was active. So, on Thursday, I saw a student's last activity was 42 minutes ago, you know, and I just sent an email to that student and I, I just, you know, opened my email and I sent an email to them. I'm like, you need to be just attending and participating, you know, um, I, I don't know if I've heard back from that student, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I can just kind of glance at that and see if people are asleep at the wheel, um, you know, or just, you know, not doing anything. So, um, well, not, that I'm a, not that I'm a tyrant, not that I'm a tyrant, but you know, it's, you know, it's important to see, um, you know, their engagement stuff. Yeah, well, we're really glad that you like kind of these new features that we're putting in. I mean, we're always trying to innovate and, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, better the, the platform. So, um, yeah. how, so, you know, given all that you've said, how do you really think that, you know, coding rooms would impact the future of education, specifically now that you've kind of changed your way of teaching? And, mm -hmm. and you know, how does it, like in your mind, specifically enable effective teaching in computer science mm -hmm. while remote or, or, or not, you know, just sure. how, how you think it can impact the future of education. Yeah, well, um, one of the other things that Coding Room lets me do um, is kind of manage the classroom, you know? Um, the newer feature, you know, being able to have it as a class and some of these newer features where I can see what people are doing and then I can see how long they've been active and not active, you know. A lot of these features are helping me to manage the classroom. Um, normally, I would have a teacher assistant and I don't have a teacher assistant this semester. And I haven't heard if I'm getting one next semester. Um, some schools have had hiring freezes. So, um, you know, my assistants are hired and technically let go every semester, right? So they, they get hired and at the end of the semester, they're no longer hired anymore, right? So if some of these schools have a hiring freeze, that means I can't get a teacher assistant, you know? So um, if that's going to be the case for a while, then what's great for me is this is solving a problem of managing the classroom. You know, normally I could just have my TA go to the back row and help someone out and then I can keep doing what I'm doing or whatever, you know? Um, so I think that being able to manage your classroom is a uh, emergent 
feature of the system, I guess, <laughs> I guess in a way by just kind of be able to see what's going on and I can jump in and do stuff. And, you know, it's, it, it's helping me a lot, you know, um, the, um, the other thing that's very interesting is, um, this is also solving a problem where I can't get within six feet of a student, you know? Um, so if a student's having a problem, you know, with their computer or laptop or whatever, um, you know, their code, I mean, you know, the, these students get very confused of where a semicolon goes and where it doesn't, um, you know, like I cannot be next to it. I can't stand next to a student, you know? Um, and some of us, you know, we really had to solve our own, solve that problem on our own. So I feel like this is solving the problem of, I can't get near a student, you know? Um, so it's, I think the way it's kind of changing this is, is it's making the management remote easier and um, it is um, solving this problem of, you know, need, needing to be, you know, even if we were in person, I still cannot be next near that student. So if I was in person right now teaching hybrid, I'd still be using this system because I can't get near that student. Mm -hmm. But I'm, yeah, I'm fully online, by the way. Some students, some teachers are doing hybrid in person and, but if I, yeah, if I was hybrid, I'd still use it because I can't go up to that student who's, you know.